What are the various types of jurisdictions? The scope of power of Supreme Court in India are understood through four different elements. Those are original jurisdiction, appellate jurisdiction, writs and advisory jurisdiction. Let's understand these one by one. The first is original jur jurisdiction. That means the Supreme Court can be reached directly without the intervention of high court, district court or lower courts. The reason being uh, if let's say there is a matter or a dispute between union and the center or this uh, union and the state or center and the state, in that case, the person or the organization can directly go to the Supreme Court. It is considered as the empire in regarding resolution of dispute for all federal matters. And therefore, we call this as a original jurisdiction. The next is Rits. What are rits? In case the fundamental rights are violated for an individual, then the person can directly move to the Supreme Court for a remedy. Supreme Court has a special orders. These orders are known as rits. What are those? Hebus, Certiorari, uh, Prohibition, Mandamus, Cure Warranto, which we have covered in a separate lecture. We won't go into the details of those in this lecture, but yes, in case the fundamental rights are violated, the person can directly reach to the Supreme Court to get special powers. And this is what is known as writs. The next is appellate jurisdiction. Appellate means appeal. So Supreme Court is the highest court of appeal. Even if a person says that in high court any decision was taken but that was not up to the mark, the person can take that decision from high court to supreme court and supreme court would take the case forward. So high court must be able to certify the case is fit for appeal and it does, it does involve a matter of serious interpretation of law or the constitution. So in that case, the case would be referred from high court to the supreme court and therefore it is an appeal by the candidate and therefore it is called as the highest court of appeal or this is known as appellate jurisdiction. Also, Supreme Court has the power to decide whether to admit the appeal even when the appeal is not allowed by the High Court. So, in, in certain cases, High Court says, yes, it is fit to go. Yes, it is a matter of serious interpretation. Take it to the Supreme Court. But there can be circumstances where that High Court does not allow it to take to the Supreme Court. But also in that matter, Supreme Court can look into an appeal or decide whether the appeal that has been taken should be carried by the Supreme Court or not. Also, High Court has this appellate jurisdiction power for the courts lower than the High Court. So this power of appellate jurisdiction holds with both Supreme Court as well as the High Court. The last is the advisory. Now this is a double-edged double sword. So here, President can refer any matter which the president feels is of a matter of public importance and requires the interpretation of the constitution to the Supreme Court for advice. Similarly, Supreme Court can provide the advice for the same matter, but in both the cases, president may take it to the Supreme Court and Supreme Court so advice may or may not be considered by the president. So Supreme Court is not bound to give the advice in all cases. Even if the advice is given, president is not bound to accept the advice. Clear? So Supreme Court not bound to give the advice. Also president not bound to accept the advice. Okay? So that is the very important part of this jurisdiction. Now, if you would say, if it is not bound to give and not bound to accept, what is the utility of this advisory power? The utility is, it helps the government to seek legal opinion in case it is required and take an important action based on that. It also helps to remove any kind of unnecessary litigations. Any unnecessary litigations can be removed because of it. And in the light of the advice of Supreme Court, the government can also make suitable changes in the action or the 
legislature and therefore we call this as an advisory jurisdiction so in this lecture we have understood four types of jurisdictions of the supreme court all the four types are very important and the further subtypes of writs which we have already covered in a separate lecture there would be many interesting lectures which we would be covering for political science so do not miss those wish you very good luck for your preparation the links for practice are available below have a wonderful day ahead